Charles Darwin, I know what you associate with the origin of the species. Well, right now we're going to talk about his species, humans. Did you know that Darwin suffered from gout? Of course, historically, he's not the only one. You know, Henry VIII suffered from gout. Many other famous people, Isaac Newton suffered from gout, Benjamin Franklin. What is gout? Gout is a buildup of sodium urate, which is a salt of uric acid, in the body, particularly in the toes, in the toes. And it can be so painful that you can't even stand having a sheet touch your toes. Why does this happen? Well, uric acid is a breakdown product of chemicals called purines, which themselves are breakdown products of DNA, which is being recycled in the body all the time. But purines are also found in food. They're found in liver, found in, in red meat, they're found in beer. And uh, some people are genetically predisposed to form large amounts of sodium urate. Now, why does it particularly deposit in the toes? Because the extremities of the body are colder than the rest of the body. And solubility, of course, goes hand in hand with temperature. The lower the temperature, the less soluble substances are. And that's why sodium urate starts depositing out in the toes. And as I said, it is really a terrible affliction. It was recognized by Hippocrates. In fact, Hippocrates, the most famous of the ancient Greek physicians, suggested that if you suffered from gout, you should stay away from red meat and stay away from alcohol. Over the years, there have been all kinds of suggestions. Benjamin Franklin, who's, who had terrible episodes of gout, said that you have to stay away from uh, food, you have to stay away from alcohol, and you also have to watch the girls. I'm not sure exactly what he meant by that, but there are others who over the years have suggested that sex also plays a role and that you're more likely to come down with uh, afflictions of gout if you indulge in that too often. Well, what do you do if you have gout? Well, today we know that there are many medications that are available. Allopurinol, for example, is, is one that will reduce the amount of uric acid that forms in the body. But believe it or not, 1500 BC, the Ebers Papyrus, which uh, was an Egyptian document, told of treating gout, this painful inflammation of the toes, with an extract of the autumn crocus, which is a flower. And today we know why it worked. Colchicine is the active ingredient in there. It is still used today by many people who suffer from gout. Uh, although, as I said, there are prescription drugs that, that probably uh, do work uh, better than that. It was Benjamin Franklin actually introduced colchicine to America because he was the U.S. representative in France and he learned about it in Europe. But perhaps the most interesting uh, sufferer of all time of gout was Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, who ruled in the 16th century. In fact, his gout was so bad that he had to have a special chair made on which he was carried around. But when he died, his thumb, believe it or not, was removed as a holy relic, and it was stored in a monastery in Spain, the monastery of San Lorenzo. And um, a couple of years ago, researchers examined the thumb and discovered that it was full of uric acid. So indeed, they confirmed the fact that Emperor Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, actually suffered from gout. So if you don't want to suffer from gout, first of all, you've got to select your parents properly so that you're not genetically predisposed. And also watch that intake of liver, watch that intake of, of meat. Don't booze it up too much, uh, even though the holidays are coming around. And uh, as far as the sex goes, well, there really is no conclusive evidence about that being linked to gout. Thank goodness.